Okay, I've got editing the autoexec.bat, and you can see that the C colon backslash mouse 602 slash slash mouse is what we're loading. This is um, Microsoft Mouse 6.02. Uh, I think that's the version number. Um, I found the, uh, on the I found a link to a lot of different mouse drivers. I'll put that at the bottom of this screen, and you can um, go there and download this same version if it if it seems like it works for you. Then another choice I've done thing I've done is I've add the, set the, I use the set mouse equals c colon backslash um, mouse six hundred two as well. So we've, we're we're doing that to make sure that those things are in sync. Next thing we also have is um, this one this line right here, which is the uh, the rem uh, and the this is the bar that's a, a shifted backslash and then you do uh, the word choice um, space c colon back uh, a b slash t colon a comma five and then you redirect it to null and what that does is gives you a five second delay so if you want to make it longer or shorter you can you can increase increase it here now with, with that last line of vm dot bat which is what's going to automatically start our system it's really hard to get in here with all this stuff flying by when you're trying to boot the machine so what you're going to do is by adding this little line in there it gives you a five second delay and if you want to break into your system before before you go into the into the menu you just you just hit control and c you hold the control key down and press c at the point when you see that thing um you know in that rem choice line where it's kind of pausing and then you can break into it and uh, get into it make any changes you have to make into your system okay i've taken the bracket out of the back of the computer and I've got a little rubber bushing I put in, in the middle of it. And um, that's going to allow us to uh, put some wires through it without the wires getting cut. So we're going to use one of these interior plugs. This is going to plug into the internal connector inside the on the power supply on the computer. And we just got to get some, uh, take some wires and strip the ends off them off. And then we're going to use these pins. And we're just going to um, connect these up using our crimp tool. Put that in there like that. Grab our B side connector crimp tool and just put that over there like that. And kind of check it out, make sure it's tight. Just crimp down and we've connected the hard part. And we go over here to the side over here with the A side of the tool and sort of give it a little crimp with that and maybe just give it a little finishing crimp with the other one. But you don't want to push it too hard with the with the second one because it'll actually break the wire off. So there you go. The red wires on the actual power supply uh, are always the five volt. So we're going to put that into the first slot, which is the slot it needs to go into. Then we'll hook our black wire into the second slot. And that's the black wire, of course, is the ground wire. So now we have our our plug for inside of our PC, all ready to go. Doesn't need the other two, the yellow and the other second black. Um, they're for the 12 volt, and we're only going to use the five, the five volt in our connection. Okay, this is the mate, and I've marked um, two spots on the side here. These are the actual where the wires go. That um, this plugs right into the wiring harness that's built into the game already. So all you do is get one of these connectors and um, put some ends on it. And we'll put our other wires back to that. So we'll put our wires back to those two. Um, to the uh, the red and the black will go into this, and we'll just make that plug that in. Okay, so we have two plugs, and um, both plugged on. So we should be ready to plug this into our computer downstairs, and then plug it into the coin door, and we should be able to get it. Nice thing too is is that this coin rest of these connections could still be used if we wanted to use it for credits using an uh, actual coin slot for credits. So if we wanted to use you know, make it so it took tokens, for example. Some people like to have their arcade set for tokens. You just put the wires that go into back to the to the to the, um, to the switches, and uh, you could actually make it so it would actually take coins. Okay, so we plugged our wires in, and um, a little mistake we made, and I'm going to show it, and we'll fix it by just reversing everything. But um, the bracket is uh, built backwards, so it's going on the wrong way. So you want to make sure that the bracket is not the way I have it. So this is the one you have to, we'll have to fix. But you want to make so that the, the, the little hook up here points the opposite direction. And then you'd have it right. So i got to reverse that. But that'll be all there is to it. But it works. And here's the cable plugged in to the wiring harness. You see it's plugged right into the wiring harness. And that's what's lighting the lights. And there we go.
with the power on, we have it working, and we have our uh, game on running. And our lights are on. Hooray! Nothing better than the coin lights. Okay, on these plugs, the bottom part down here is the ground line. The top two were the, uh, the left and the right. And apparently, I had mine wired wrong. So, that was what I did wrong. That's how I easily fixed my hum problem. So what we're going to do is strap this XRK controller onto the Space Dual control panel. And uh, something's telling me this isn't going to work too well. So I better come up with a different plan than this. Okay, well, we've got the buttons, and they're uh, a little dirty on the inside, and I just took them apart. Um, they come apart pretty easy. Uh, there's just a spring inside of them here. There's a little spring that goes inside there, and there's the clip, the E-clip that goes on the back of them. And uh, pretty much that's all you got to do. You take them apart, clean them up, and uh, put them back together again. That's how they come out. Look nice. So we've got the control panel. We put the joystick on and we have put the buttons on and you can see that that's all the buttons and the joystick been installed don't have the spinner yet we're going to do that later maybe in a second video I think um, main goal is get this working as a just the control panel with the basic uh, controls so um, that's the way the buttons are right now okay so we have uh, we put a wire we've got a piece of black wire um, this is uh, 14 gauge uh, stranded wire and we've crimped on a connector um, the connectors we're using are these uh, 16, 14, uh, 16, 14 to 16 gauge um, and they're the uh, 187 connectors so we're right in, the, in there with the gauge of the wire and um, so it's a 187, I don't know how clear it is but okay so it's 187 connectors and that's what you need for these if you're looking down here to plug them onto these connectors so that's what's actually going to make it work right and you know that's how they'll plug in so what we're going to do is we're going to actually going to run a loop loop to loop to run from one to another and make the it's called the ground braid so we're going to do that the ground connections and we'll do that Okay, so we're going to take two wires and we're going to twirl them together like this and we're going to connect them, put them into the connector like that and by doing that we can see the wire coming through I'm just going to get it to the point where the wire comes through and then we get our crimp tool out and we just crimp down on top of it like that Okay, now both those wires are now in there, making good contact, and then basically we're just going to make a little little loops like this. It's going to go from one to another, and then we just go one to another, and we get, we make a wire that goes from one to another, and it ends up at the ends up where the board is going to be put at. Okay, so you can should be able to see that there's a black wire running between every switch. So basically, you're running one black wire everywhere to every switch. This is the original iPack that we're going to use. And the original one doesn't have an escape key pre-programmed into a standard button. I mean, you have to press two keys to get escape on this version. So what we're going to do is we're going to reprogram one of the buttons on here to be the escape key. Okay, so we created an IPAC directory. And inside the IPAC directory, I've put in the two files you can download from the internet, from the, uh, from the website. And it's the um, IPAC utility. Um, utility. So... Um, I'm using an earlier version of the IPAC, so I'm using the IPAC CU1. This brings up a utility. You have to have your mouse drivers loaded, and you have to have a regular mouse installed. But once you bring it up, you can see that you can actually pr pick a key that you want to pre-program. And I'm, I'm actually going to use the one player seventh button, and that's because of where it's located at on the board. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to tell it to press, it's going to ask me what, what key do I want to press. So I'm going to press the escape key on the keyboard. And now that's been changed to 110. And if you look, if you look at their chart, their chart shows that that's, that's actually the correct number. You can get the chart on their, on their website as well. Then I'm going to choose program. 
and it'll say programming. And when it says success, that means we can exit. This board is ready to go right now. Okay, you can see I've actually labeled all of the buttons and the switches um, from the bottom. And the reason I did this was is because when I go to connect these all up, it's going to be a lot easier to figure out which one is which if I have them already labeled. So all I got to do now is just simply connect the wires up to the right place and then we'll be able to uh, hook them all up and hook them back into the board and it should be all good to go. Okay, so I made these little pigtails and what we're going to do is I'm going to make, um, for the buttons that are duplicated on the joystick, you'll see that the um, one right and the one left button are um, are going to be duplicated by the joystick buttons. So what we're going to do is make little jumper wires. So this will be the left um, joystick button and also the left button. And uh, that's how we're going to do that. So this is the control panel. It's been all wired. And uh, put some wire ties on there to help make the wires a little more um, negotiable. Now what I've also done is the control on the uh, control panel here on the the uh, iPack board is um, it puts some Velcro strips in the back of it. So we're going to mount that. It'll actually fit underneath it here. Uh, actually, there's a room for it down there, and that's how that'll be plugged in, and the, you'll be able to get to the uh, cables for the keyboard and stuff like that. But I'm kind of going to wait till I get it downstairs back on the game again to do that. Now I'm going to take all this tape off, and uh, we should be good to go. So here's the control panel from the front, other than this hole right here, which will be for the spinner, and it has no overlay, but when the overlay comes in and the guys make those, we'll uh, put it on, or I'll make my own, not sure yet what to do, but that's the way it looks right now, and uh, that's my plans for it, the way it looks, and uh, it can still be played right now, so that's the whole goal, Let's, we're going to try to get that to work and make it into a playable game. Okay, we're using some Velcro, we put it down and we matched it up so that we can just place the board, and it'll stick there. And then that's a really good way, and we found that that's a good place to put it. I was going to put it on the back of the control panel, but it was getting pretty cramped down there. So we've uh, we've actually moved it up over here to the to the top, and it works fine there. Okay, we're here at the back of the game, and um, what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to redirect all the keys. Um, the the uh, the keys have got to be set for whatever your joysticks and setup is set up for. Um, since I went with the standard MAME settings, for some reason, some of the games aren't set that way. So what we're going to do is you hit tab. We're actually using the monitor in the back of the game. We're not using the actual vector monitor. You, gotta, you have to have a real regular monitor to set this up with. But that's okay. Just set it up with this. Plug it in. And then um, go into uh, the input for this game. And then you'll see that there's a whole bunch of settings there. And um, kind of hard to see them. I'm going to try to zoom a little bit, see if we can see these better. But you can see right there that that the um, right arrow, left arrow, up, down arrow, okay. And what we've done is we've we've programmed those to the to the way we want them. Now what we'll do is if you see at the top here, there's a little arrow, and you move it down to whatever one of the ones you want to fix. My like, camera picks up, catches up with us. At this point, when you find the one you want to change, okay, you, you press the enter key, and it'll change it to that. And then you can then press whatever key you want to make that, to make that function the same. So, since I wanted to make the right joystick turning right into the right arrow, I just press the right arrow key, and it set it that way. And then when you get, to, when you get done, just go to return to, to main menu, and... Uh, there you go. Just just press enter and you can go and return to the game. Press enter, and there you go. And then you're back into the game itself. And now when you go to play, the buttons will all be mapped properly. So that's how you map your games, your your buttons, make sure that they're all mapped properly towards the game.